locked between hard rock formations, ilmenite is found combined with magnetite or magnetic iron oxide. Here, a few miles south of Lake Placid, is the McIntyre Mine of National Lead Company, the largest producing titanium mine in the world. First discovered by white men in 1826, the ore was originally mined for iron, the titanium being considered a useless waste product. It was not until 1941, when the nation's defense effort needed a good domestic source of titanium ore, that this property was developed for its ilmenite, with the iron reduced to secondary importance. Collecting ore is a continual job of drilling, blasting, and breaking rock to sizes suitable for working by the forces of gravity, and especially magnetism. It is the shovel operator who takes the first steps in separating the ore from the waste, loading rocks of size suitable for the mill. The milling process is basically one of crushing and grinding, then of separating. First, the ore will be separated from the waste rock, then the magnetite will be extracted, and gang waste materials like feldspar, hornblende, and garnet rejected until the remaining ilmenite is purified and concentrated. Each truck hauls 20 tons of rocks, about the size of a suitcase, for dumping down a chute. The load is held back by a curtain of chains before being fed into the hopper of the jaw crusher to be broken to the size of footballs. conveyed for further reduction to the cone crushers. Where the stony footballs will be broken to pieces the size of large marbles, and then to fragments less than half an inch across. After the fragments are screened, those that are too big are run over a magnetic pulley which pulls the magnetic ore containing ilmenite, magnetite, and gang out of the non-magnetic waste rock. For the next application of magnetic force, the ore must be pulverized in wet rod mills until it is as fine as grains of salt or pepper. The wet ground ore is pumped to a wet magnetic separator where the magnetite is separated from the ilmenite. This is readily done because the iron mineral is the more magnetic, so that the titanium mineral is unaffected by the low intensity magnetic separator. The waterborne magnetite particles are held to the underside of the belt by the magnetic field above. As the belt moves out of the field, the magnetite slurry spills off to be dried and made into lumps called sinters used in the steel industry. To handle the enormous volume of ore, this operation must be carried on by a large battery of these magnetic separators. The remaining ore contains not only ilmenite, but also sandy or siliceous waste materials. To separate them, the second force, gravity, is put to work. After being divided into different sizes, the material is refined and concentrated on these reciprocating tables. The operation is based on the fact that grains containing ilmenite are heavier than grains of waste materials. As the tabletop slowly moves forward and then quickly jerks back, 
the heavier ilmenite gathers behind the riffles, while the lighter waste is washed off and over the side. In this way, the different sizes of almost pure ilmenite are discharged in concentrated form off the end of the tables and sent to filter wheels, where the water is sucked out through the fabric covering. The semi-dry ilmenite is conveyed to a bin where it is dried by steam coils until it becomes a free-flowing product that can be more easily refined by high-intensity magnetism. First, to be sure the ilmenite is shipped as the purest practical concentrate, it is passed through a low-intensity magnetic separator to remove any remaining magnetite. The small belt passes under the electromagnet and at right angles to the broader feed belt from which it picks up the magnetite. The feed then passes under a high intensity magnet that separates the ilmenite from traces of waste materials. The small belt passing under the electromagnet and at right angles to the broader feed belt from which ilmenite is picked up. At last, ore that was once locked in stone solid as the rock of ages is now set free as concentrated ilmenite, ready for shipment to plants in St. Louis, Missouri and Sayreville, New Jersey, where this shiny black powder is transformed into a dozen grades of the most brilliantly white of all pigments, 